terminal multiplexer can help expand your digital workspace. This video will be a short breakdown of each tool. Before I begin, we're going to talk about the prefix. The prefix is basically just a hotkey you would press before running, like split the terminal in half or some other command. So for the screen command, it would be control, control A. And if you're doing Tmux, it'd be control B as its default and so on. Each terminal multiplexer will be different. And that's something to consider. Starting off with screen as our first terminal multiplexer. I know a little cringe, but screen has a lot more utility, but we're starting on demonstrating its terminal multiplexing capabilities first. To enter a screen session, we just type screen, puts us into this copyright page, enter to get around it. And it doesn't seem like we're in a screen session, but if we type exit to terminate the session, you can see that we were in the screen session. I'm saying the screen way too much. Get back into a screen session. If we wanted to exit from multiple, we can do our prefix, which is control A, shift colon, which will put us in command mode. And then we just type quit. To make it more obvious that we were in a screen session, we can add a status bar at the bottom by creating a screen RC file before running a new screen session and then pasting this in. Everything other than the bottom line I got off of a different website that I'll link in the description. And then the last line is just to change the prefix to another hotkey instead of just control A, setting it to like control B if you're a Tmux user, but when it comes to changing the prefix, I usually leave that alone so it doesn't conflict with other Linux tools. So if we save and we type screen again, now we can see we have a status bar at the bottom, kind of like you would see in default Tmux. If you would like to start a screen session with a different name, like let's say we want to do Oreo, we just do capital S. Now when we check our screen sessions with screen ls, we can see that our screen session is called Oreo. To create a new window, we will just do control A and then C, which gives us a new window. To list out all the windows without jumping between them, like let's say you don't have the status bar at the bottom, you can do control A, W, and it displays them on the bottom left. If you want to switch between them, you can either do prefix P or prefix N for next or, or previous windows. If you want to cycle through a bunch of windows, you do control A and then shift double quote and then select the window you want, hit enter, and you'll be put into that window. To split the screen horizontally, we'll do our prefix with a capital S but there's an extra step you need to do. We need to first, in the split, we need to go down to the lower level with control A tab. And we can't really type here until we create a new window within the split. So do control A C. Now that we have a new window, we can type. And then control A tab to go back up and so on. To split it vertically, we would do control A Oh, and I stopped it, oops. Control A, and then you would do the bar or the pipe symbol. And then Control A tab again, Control A C to create a new window. Also note that in your splits, when you switch between windows, it doesn't switch between the complete window. It only switches between the window in that split which kind of feels weird, but yeah. To detach from the session without closing it, we'll do our prefix, control A, and then D. Screen dash LS, like before, to show that our session is active, we'll just detach from it. And then to reattach, we can just do screen with the R flag, or we can do screen, with the R flag and the session name, but the session name has to include 
or does it not anymore? That was weird. Moving on to the part of screen that makes screen very useful beyond just a simple terminal multiplexer is the ability to interact with serial devices. So we will detach from this session and we will sudo dmessage rep for TTY devices and dash I for case sensitive. Put in our handy dandy password, watch nothing show up. Let me plug in. What I'm using for this demonstration is my DEFCON 29 badge because part of the challenge was a serial device. All right, there we go. So now we plugged it back in and it shows up, double checking that the serial device can be seen. We can do ls dev and then grep for ACM zero. There's a device. To have a session on the serial device and interact with it, we would do screen, oh, pseudo screen, and then path to the device, which is dev tty ACM zero, and then hit enter. And we are in a screen session with the DEF CON badge. And then to quit out of this command mode, quit. Another benefit of screen is that it works over SSH. So if we were to SSH over to our Arch Linux machine, which is a virtual machine running on the network, so SSH Oreo at this virtual machine real quick. We can do screen over SSH. And like before, we'll split the screen horizontally. And we can, you know, do our work. The next terminal multiplexer I'm going to cover is Tmux. Tmux is the terminal multiplexer I prefer using. And that's mainly because it also works with SSH. So if we log into our Arch machine again and run Tmux, we have a Tmux session where we can split remotely. To split horizontally, we do our prefix control B and then shift double quote to split horizontally. We do our prefix, control B, and percent sign. Whenever I say prefix and forget to say what it is, for tmux, it's just con control plus B, and then plus some other command. To hop between the panes, we can either do control B arrow key, either by doing the prefix every time or pressing it once and rapidly arrowing around. The issue with using the arrow keys is that sometimes when you swap panes too quickly and you try to type or arrow up, let's say in your history, you might accidentally jump back to a different pane, which can get annoying. Another option is to use the prefix control B and then with O which allows you to cycle through all the pans one at a time in the same order. Another way to do it is do control B Q, which will pop up all the numbers of every pan. And then what we do is we select the window number we want to go to. So if I want to go to one, I type one, go to two, I type two. If you want to swap between the two most used pans, you do your prefix, control B, and then semicolon. As we can see, you're jumping from top right and bottom left. To shift the panes around one tile at a time, like let's say we do oreobyte.com. As an example, we would do control B, our prefix, and then we do shift curly bracket, and the direction we want to go. The left curly bracket will make it go counterclockwise, or that doesn't look very counterclockwise to me. It should be going in a circle. But anyways, one goes one direction, the other one goes the other direction. 
moving on to closing out of a single pane, we can either type exit or we can type our prefix, control B with the X. That gives us a little prompt with the kill. We can say no if we don't want to kill or we can say yes, we do want to kill it. To kill the whole window, we just do our prefix with shift ampersand. It gives us the same prompt. If we want to kill the entire window, we will say yes. In this case, because it's the only window of that session, it will terminate the session. To start a new TMUX session with a different name, we will do TMUX new with the S session flag and our session name, which will be IPSEC rocks. To create a new window, we'll do prefix control B followed by C. To hop between the two windows, we'll do control B P for previous and control B N for next. To rename a session, we can do prefix, control B, followed by a comma, and then delete what's there and type new session name. So if we wanted to go back to bash and call it like notes and create a third one, and we'll call it like exploitation. To jump between the last two use windows, you can use the control B L flag which is more clear if we have four windows. So window, and we demonstrate that by selecting the second and the third window with the control BW flag, which allows us to cycle through all the windows in the session. So we'll click on one, and we'll click on, or well, two and four. And now at the bottom, you can see we're jumping from one or from two because it starts at zero and four. To detach from a session, we can do prefix con followed by D, so be control B D. Create a new session called Chad Rocks. Now to swap between sessions without detaching, we can do control B S. And now you can jump between our sessions entirely. And then we can arrow left to right to jump back into the window we want, or we can bring it back. So let's say we want to go back to Epsoc Rocks into Notes, and we're back in Notes. Last thing to cover for Tmux is scroll mode and copy mode. So let's say we, in our notes, we use cheat.sh, which is an online little cheat sheet. And we want to scroll through the page of all the data we just pulled. So we go into scroll mode or copy mode by hitting control B with the left bracket, not a curly bracket. And then we can either use our mouse to scroll up and down, or we can use our arrow keys to scroll up and down. If there's a particular thing we want to search for, we can do Control R, like if we want to look for post requests, and then hold down Control and keep hitting it to search back up the page. And then if you want to search down the page, you do Control S. Once you've found what you're looking for, type the enter key and resume scrolling from that position. For example, if you're using LinP's output and you want to stop at a particular juicy part of your results, you can do it by hitting enter. Once you've identified what you want, let's say we're copying somebody's RSA key. In copy mode, we'll do control B, which allows us to highlight, alt W to select what we want to copy. and then control B, the other bracket to paste. Note that this will not copy outside of TMUX. If you are completely lost about using TMUX, there is a help menu built into TMUX to quickly look at all the commands. So if you do your prefix, control B, and then question mark, you can see that it puts us into a copy mode or scroll mode that we can either 
search up or down for what we want, kind of like you would do normally, but in this case, in the help menu. To exit, we just hit the Q to quit. The next Tmux trick is to zoom in. Previously on the Trihackme room, when I had data in another window, I would detach it as its own window by control B exclamation point, which will put it in its own window so you can see all the text in its entirety. Technically, you don't have to do that. You can just do control B Z, which will zoom into the current pane, hiding all the other panes. And then control B Z, or prefix Z again, to unzoom. And it prevents you from creating too many windows on accident by detaching it. Now, detaching it two times, we have three different windows we now have to manage. That might not be very much fun. Another issue that you may come across with TMUX is you have your layout all nice. Let's say we put a map here, and we'll put Metasploit here, and we'll put Let's say we're doing our notes over here and they're very important. And then we have another split over here. We have like evil win RM and whatever. You have your layout exactly how you want it. And a way to swap around your layout is to do control B with the space bar, but that also breaks what you currently have set up. If you do this, do not panic and spam the control B spacebar. Go into command mode by typing by typing control B shift colon and type select layout or select dash layout dash O and it puts it back to our previous layout, which prevents us from panicking and having to waste time re-smashing spacebar. So if we do control B spacebar like before, ruin our layout back here also in command mode, you can also go up. It does have its own history. You do not have to always retype everything. If you want to auto space out all your panes apart evenly, you do your prefix, control B with shift E, and that automatically spaces them out all evenly. For example, if this was like squished over here, this was like squished over here, We'll do control B shift E. Mm. Seems like it only does it for the pane that it's selected, but that's a little quick way to do it. If you want to manually resize your window, you can hold down control B and then with the arrow keys, move it around. So this is the only time you'd probably hold down keys other than using reverse or down the page search is when you are moving your windows around. If you don't want to hold on your fingers and strain your hands, you can just go back to command mode, do resize pan, your option. There are four different options for up, down, left, right, and down. So let's say we want to move it down by 10 cells, it would move it down. If we want to resize and we want to go up, we do U by 10. If we want to go to the left by 2, we'll go to the left. If we want to go to the right by 5, we'll jump to the right. Now to restore my Tmux config file to cover additional configurations that were not covered in the TriHackMe's walkthrough that are super useful, but first we have to add our Tmux config file. So first we exit out, copy our documents, back up Tmux to our home directory, and then run Tmux, and it works. If you have an issue with it not loading properly, what you'll have to do is type Tmux kill server, and then relaunch it again. But it seems like it loaded in fine. Let's try to break it real quick. Oh. Tmux, exit, copy this over, run Tmux again, and it's working fine. That's weird. Okay, 
So if we look at our video less on tmux.conf and we search for bind key more focused on this one, it allows us to split our terminal in a different location rather than where it started from. What I mean by that is if we we started our tmux session in our home directory. Let's say we were working out of temp. If we were to create a new window normally, it would put us back in home. However, if we use our bind key of the pipe symbol, it will keep us in that directory. And it's a way to not have to reset the directory path, which you can do by saying pwd, copying this, xclip is not installed, that's kind of silly. We'll just copy it the main way you would copy it. Copying it to your clipboard. And then going into command mode, doing attach, instead of doing like attach, we can just do A dash C and then your path. Oh, come on. Of course, it doesn't paste in here. Temp. I guess. Pack man. That's not how that works. X clip. Yes. Thing I wanted to show, which requires X clip or whatever copying tool you want, is to be able to copy outside of Tmux. Tmux save returned and it's airing out. It's not going to work because we're trying to copy something over an SSH session. It's only going to copy to that session. So that's better demonstrated back on my machine. So we take all this. We actually, let's go back to here and go to bind key. This line. We're saying copy mode, send our copied selection ran in this command where we're saying tmx save the data as xclip select clip, which is our secondary clipboard. Our primary clipboard is our middle mouse click to paste, but since it's our secondary clipboard, control C, control V to paste. Go back to this one, grab all this stuff. Hit our Y because we set it as just the Y key. Now, from our Kali machine, we can do a cat end of line file into notes, and then we can just paste all the stuff that we copied. End of line file. It didn't like that. What is it complaining on? I'm not sure. All right, another quality of life element is to add, let's see, there's a lot of good stuff here, but is to add the shift to switch windows and the bind key M for the all arrows. What that basically means is that instead of doing control B, either like next or previous to switch between our windows, this one allows us to do shift, just hold down the shift key and we can just use the arrow key once to move around without having to touch the prefix at all. And the bind select pane allows us to Let's create another split of four again. Allows us to hold on the alt and just jump around without the issue of accidentally jumping back to a previous pane, like we do our history, and then go up. There's no accidental jump. And the last one would be the join key. 
Well, it should not be in this file. Let's see if it's in here. Uh, oh man, it does not. So we'll add it real quick. We are going to add a join alias. So usually when you would join panes together into other windows, you would just do, let's call this one join. We can say like join in command, not rename. In command mode, we do like join pane or option and then where we want it to go to send by its name whatever so in this case we'll do join pane dash t and then you join I have two I have two panes of the same name oh no join pane dash t uh, join and now this one will be sent to this one and join oh come on but instead we can use this bind key to say do you use the prefix with a capital j and then give us a window name so we don't have to type majority of that content so we'll refer in this to test and in this window we can do our well, first we should probably reset, update our source file, our config file by doing source file, and then tmlux.conf, and then when we do prefix j, now it prompts us to join to a window. We can join to test, and then jumps over there. You can add another alias for the other option that you can use with join pane if you'd like. And that concludes the segment on tmux. Another popular terminal multiplexer tool people commonly use is Terminator. However, Terminator does not work over SSH because it spawns its own window as a new terminal application. So first, if we exit out of Tmux and clear the screen, if we do Terminator, you can see our window hangs in this SSH session. But if we look at our virtual machine, we can see we have a new window and this is our terminator to split horizontally we do control shift o and when you increase the size of a single pane it only increases the one pane if we were to go back to our linux terminal and quickly do tmux if we have it split in this fashion and we try to change the size, it's going to change the size of all the panes. But with Terminator, that's not really an issue because it only does them one at a time, which may be a benefit to you. To split it vertically, we do Control shift e make that a little bit bigger. To manually resize the window, we can do Control shift arrow key and to move between the panes, we'll do Alt arrow key. If we have a bunch of text, curl, sheet, dot sh, wget, we can use our mouse wheel because our arrow key just goes up our history. So we can just use our mouse wheel. If you want to fine tune Terminator to your liking, right click, go to preferences. And then you can either change your key bindings. And or if you have any extra custom plugins and whatnot. And that's really about it about Terminator. A lot of people like it. You're not going to be able to manage any servers with it unless you have GUI access. There are other terminal multiplexers you can use beyond the three covered so far. However, they're either going to install a lot of additional files that we may not want and or be just a wrapper for another terminal multiplexer we've already been using. For example, there's one called console. So if we do app search console. Now if I can find it. Is a X terminal emulator. 
that you might find in one of those top 10 terminal multiplexers list. But if we do apt and well, sudo apt install console and put in our password, you can see that it wants to install all this stuff for an additional space of 21 megabytes or in that ballpark. It's kind of a lot for a terminal multiplexer, so no thanks. There's another terminal multiplexer called by Bayou, I'm not even gonna try, that we could install. So I'm not sure if I've installed it already. Let's double check. I have not. App install BYBOU. And it doesn't seem like as big as console. Yep, that's fine. However, when we run the command by you select backend, you can see it's already defaulting to using Tmux. So might as well use Tmux if you'd like to use this terminal multiplexer. Instead, all the power to you, just something to know that I found interesting. Instead of using the terminal multiplexers covered in this video, if you're using Kali, you can already split the terminal. So if we wanted to create a new window, we would do Control Shift T, which would give us a new terminal tab, and then Control Shift D would split it horizontal. Control Shift R will split it vertically. And Control Shift E would close the window. And if we type a bunch of stuff, Control Shift X would clear the screen. The benefit of splitting this way is if we do Control Shift Plus to make each window bigger, it only affects the single pane that you've selected. And then the thing they really got right is when you navigate, you don't have to set up that Tmux prefix like shown previously to add the alt alias. You just hold down the alt key and then you use your mouse to jump around. So if we split, we have the four corners hold down alt and jump around with our arrow keys. The only thing I don't know about a hotkey for is to to resize the window of Kali's default terminal multiplexer. You just use your mouse to click and drag the windows to your liking. Thanks again for watching and shout out to Ode and Chad B. Noob and anybody else that has helped me learn these terminal multiplexers in the past. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.